1. A bit of backstory. I recently started working part-time at a renaissance fair to help out an old family friend. There was myself and another person. Our job was to stand inside a little booth and tell people the price to get into the fair. Then, if they paid, we handed them everything they would need, answered the questions they might have, stamped their hands, and sent them off into the world of wonder beyond the gates. Everything was going fine for the first three days. We had the regular few people complaining it was too expensive, but otherwise we were good as gold. Until she appeared. Like a witch in the night, she was swift, evil, and deserved to be burned at the stake. Now you may be wondering, was she really that bad? Yes, my pretties, she was. To start with, she didn't seem it though. She acted like a regular customer that just wanted to enjoy the fair. But oh, how wrong we were. Now to preface, this fair had discounts for different people. For example, if you're a member of a certain card holder, you get a discount. If you're a first responder, well, you get a discount. And if you dress up, well, you get a motherfucking discount. Kids under 12 were $8, and adults were $12. Mine is children, if you qualified for any of the discounts, you get $2 off. Most of the time, my co-worker and I do whatever we could to give people a discount because, well, it's only $2. But this wonderful witch didn't even put in the effort. She wore a simple red dress with a fake plastic flower crown in her hair. As for her poor son, she made him dress as a witch. In hindsight, that was our first and only warning that we foolishly ignored. Now back to the story. As soon as the price left my co-worker's mouth, it was like a switch flipped inside her small, small brain. Her head spun, warts grew all over her face, and I swear her eyes almost lit on fire with the rage she had in them. And that was the moment I knew I'd be leaving with a story to give to my pretties. The first words out of her mouth were, I'm dressed up, I get a discount. To which my co-worker pointed out that a red dress and plastic flowers didn't really count. So this fully grown adult woman, with her child standing beside her, stepped away from the counter, grasped the side of her dress in each hand, and spat, Visit with Nathan's attire! Now at this point my poor co-worker was done with this woman's shit. So she gave her the oh-so-important $2 discount. She triumphantly walked away from the counter, Nose held high because she managed to steal the happiness from two lowly workers. Now I wish this is where the story ended, but of course the witch had to steal more from us, or she wouldn't be satisfied. In the middle of her triumphant walk, she realized something groundbreakingly important. She didn't get the $2 discount for her poor son. So she promptly turned around, prepared to advance on us once again, but she was intercepted by some temporary angels, that wanted to gladly pay us to go have their day of fun. So there she stood, looming like an impending storm on the horizon. Now in the amount of time it took my co-worker to greet these beautiful angels, I noticed three things. One, the look in her eyes was somehow even worse. Two, her poor son had wandered into the fair alone. Three, whatever happened next, I was going to lose what little patience I had left. Once our temporary angels departed, I knew we were going to be faced with hell next, and I was right. She stormed up to the counter once again and hissed with so much venom in her voice that I thought I'd need to call animal control. My son dressed up, what about his discount? My poor co-worker let out a short sigh and explained to her that because kids already get the four dollars off, they won't get an extra discount. This didn't please Mother Witch one bit. She wanted that two dollars no matter what happened. In response, she took on a very demeaning, high and mighty tone and said, On your Facebook page, it says any patron that dresses up gets the discount. And just like that, both my co-worker and I's patients flew south for the winter. Despite that, my co-worker was still very nice to this witch and simply said, If it'll make you happy, here's your two dollars. In response, Mother Witch let out another string of venom, but how we should honor our word and yada yada yada. But of course, every show needs a third act. Not only did this witch steal our time, patience, and happiness, but she had to steal our group's good reviews on Facebook too. Basically in her post she claims she wore the same dress that one of the vendors has for sale, but to that I say how would we know that? 
We're not the director of the event or anything. We're just lowly workers that never get to leave the booth for the 9 plus hours we're there. Not only that, but she lied about showing us the group's discount page. I remember because I was watching her the whole time, wondering why those $4 were so important to her. And she never once took out her phone. And of course, we were somehow in the wrong and gave her horrible customer service, even though we were nothing but kind to her, even when she hissed her venom at us. But oh well. At least I left with a story to share with my pretties. And some advice to everyone. Don't be like Mother Witch. 2. So I live down south. I work at one of our family dollar stores in my town. My store happens to be in a not-so-nice neighborhood. Because of this, I take a lot of crap from shitty people. Thieves, drug addicts, you name it. But I was used to it after three years, and I did it without losing my cool. I also had some of the sweetest customers. They love me. So after a long day of getting snapped at, and holding my customer service smile at the same time, I go off in my bright red polo shirt with my store logo on it. I always had a habit of taking my name tag off after I got in my car. I suffer cluster headaches, so I need to stop at the nearest Walgreens for some ibuprofen. I park and go in, make it to the pain meds to get what I need. I start browsing around. I was not looking for anything in particular. I made it to the candy aisle near the front, where the double doors open up, and a short black man, maybe in his forties, comes walking in real fast. He rushes past the cashier, and has passed four aisles straight to me. I'm standing there shocked for a second. Then I say to myself, he has to be headed to the pharmacy in the back, or maybe he needed to pick up something fast. As he gets closer, I noticed his eyes looked like they were about to come out of his head. He finally makes his way to me. He has on a dirty white t-shirt and jeans. He says, Excuse me, but where's the tile and all? I said, oh, in the back, that way, and smiled. He stood there for a second staring at me. He says, what aisle? I said, I don't know, and pointed again. He said, listen now, how the hell are you going to work here and you don't know where shit's at? Thank you, sweet lord, for this moment. I turned around and said, listen here, I don't even work here, so how the hell should I know what damn aisle it's on? He stared at me for a minute and huffed off. Not two minutes later, I kid you not. He comes right back to the aisle I'm on and walks up to me and says, If you don't work here, why you got on a uniform shirt? And turns around and walks off fast. Oh, hell no. I walked right up behind him. Let me tell you a little about me. First, I am a 42-year-old, 5 feet tall, black female mother of three male teenagers. I don't take too much shit. At my job, I'm sweet and helpful and friendly. But this is not my store, and I am not one to be messed with. So I walk up behind him while he is getting ready to get in line and pay, and say, How the hell you got the crazy idea I work here? The cashier looked up at me. He was just staring straight ahead, not saying a thing, waiting for her to finish. Before she did, I said I have on a bright red shirt with family dollar on it. She has on a light blue with Walgreens on it. Secondly, you passed the real worker to come up to me and be rude. He paid and almost ran out. I of course explained to the cashier what had happened, she apologized, and said he was not even supposed to be in the store. He is a known thief. I paid and head to my car. When I got outside, the man was just getting on his bicycle to leave. He stared me down as I walked all the way back to my car and sped off. Turned out to be a good day after all. 3. I work at a family-owned hardware store. Nothing fancy, nothing big. Most of our customers are contractors who come in two or three times a day. That being said, I've come to have a friendly and amicable relationship with most of these customers. The contractors brightened up my day, especially since most other customers tend to be older men who think a 19-year-old girl has no place working in a hardware store. I've had so many people ignore me and go straight to one of the other salesmen, who I affectionately refer to as the boys. No big deal. I just paint on my customer service smile and pretend not to be upset by it. My story doesn't involve either of these two types of customers. It doesn't even involve the few rude customers who insist I help them and then insult me for my lack of knowledge over the electric and plumbing areas. 
This story involves two of the boys, and a very out of place man who walked into our little store. I am the one and only cashier at this store, from the hours of noon to closing. Most of the time I am the only person behind the counter during these hours. Usually the boys are running around, placing orders and helping customers. Thankfully, that wasn't the case this fateful afternoon. My floor manager was in the back terminal at the counter, doing paperwork at his computer. He is a very large, probably once intimidating man. These days he is just overweight and bordering on elderly. My co-worker, who goes by the well-deserved nickname of Weasel, was also at the counter. Weasel was on the phone with a supplier ordering shutters or something to that effect. I was standing behind the cash register waiting for a customer to come through the doors so that I could greet and assist them as needed. This day in particular had been uncharacteristically slow. I blamed the weather. It had been below 40 degrees Fahrenheit all day, which was unusual for our southern climate. I looked up from my computer as the door opened. Ready to give my chipper good afternoon salutation. I made eye contact with a fellow so odd my words faltered a little. He was probably in his late thirties, of a medium height and build. Despite the chill outside, he was shirtless and sported many badly inked tattoos, including permanent eyeliner. I have nothing against tattoos, my own father has too many for me to count, but this guy just looked abnormal. He also had a wild, shifty look in his eyes, like he was tweaking hard. My first instinct was to hide and let Weasel deal with him, but I decided not to judge him too quickly, and I said my greeting. He made a beeline toward me. I immediately regretted it. He smelled like he hadn't washed in days, and pissed himself at some point before entering the store. Can I use your phone? I really gotta call somebody. Please, can I use your phone? At first, I wasn't certain what he was saying. It was all jumbled together, and he put a weird emphasis on the word phone. His black-ringed eyes stared me down, unblinking. I didn't know the policy for phone usage because I'd never had a customer ask to use my phone before, so I politely asked him to excuse me for a moment and turned to ask my floor manager. My floor manager was on the phone at this point, and it took me a minute to get his attention. At that moment, I heard from behind me, Ah, miss, this phone doesn't work. I really need to use a phone. The man had leaned over the counter and was trying to dial on the phone next to the cash register. That got my floor manager's attention quickly. He said loudly, No, these aren't public phones. Get on out of here and don't come back. To my surprise, the guy just dropped the phone and left, giving a couple of pitiful, Come on, man, as he went. I put the phone back on the receiver once the door was tightly shut behind the man. Looking at the caller ID, I realized he hadn't even dialed a complete phone number. My floor manager and Weasel both gave me a lecture about stronger danger and sticking up for myself after that. I'll never forget how serious my floor manager was when he said, don't ever let anyone use you like that. Don't be afraid of being rude. Weasel added his own statement of, You're smart. You should know bad news when you see it. Don't doubt yourself. Overall, I'm just glad he had no ill will and left without a fuss. 4. Background. I'm a 25-year-old female and the manager and social media coordinator for a small fast food restaurant. My restaurant is located in a small country college town. We've been open for six months, and I've been the manager for two months. The gist of my job as manager is I take orders over the phone and in person. I clean and stock, I direct others, I answer questions and concerns, and I handle issues. On this particular day, I worked a double from 10am to 10.30pm. During the last hour of work, a girl comes in to pick up an order, I assume. Granted, at the end of double shifts, I'm usually not paying attention to every detail, and I'm focused on getting everyone out so I can go home and shower. This girl was someone I recognized as a customer who comes in often, and as someone who was in college for the same degree that I graduated with. She comes up to my counter in front of me and asks if I was who I am. With a smile I was already wearing, I said, yes, what can I help you with? From that point on, she states that she didn't appreciate me questioning her boyfriend about who she was 
and that it was very inappropriate of me to be doing so when I'm supposed to be taking orders. Genuinely confused, I asked her, What do you mean by questioning him? She says with an attitude, Asking him who his girlfriend was? All I'm saying is I would appreciate it if you wouldn't do that again. I apologize partly because that's all she wanted and also because I was slightly confused, trying to figure out who I was talking to that actually knew my name. Important points to mention, one, I do not give out my name to random people that I don't know. Why not, you say? Because I've been stalked and approached by many men before. There are many men that flirt with me while at work, and in some cases it does freak me out from time to time. Two, I have never questioned her boyfriend in the way she explained it. As I asked questions based on what he was ordering for her, and was asking her the questions I was asking him, I added, Is that your girlfriend? Tell her I said, what's up, girl? I know this because I've done this multiple times before to other customers, and there has never been an issue with me. My personality is very cheerful and carefree on the good work days. I'm very talkative, and I love joking around when there's time for me to relax. When I answer the phone, my greetings are very tailored toward my personality, so regulars always know that it's me. So I figured that she must be dating someone that knew me, for her to know my name and that she must be insecure about herself or relationship. There could even be a possibility that her boyfriend isn't trustworthy and she was taking it out on me. I decided to write about this moment because for one, I was a little bit upset about the situation and I wanted to know what others thought about it. I hate that I didn't have the opportunity to explain to her that she was overanalyzing my intentions in the most professional way possible. She made me seem as though I was flirting with her man when in reality, I don't know who he is nor do I care. I hate when people take my good intentions and make them into something they aren't. I also feel bad for her and whatever she has going on in her life. In short, if you believe I was being unprofessional, I truly apologize to you, sis, but that won't change the insecurities you're having with yourself. I wish you the best. Update. 24th of July, 2017. She came up to my store on Sunday. I don't normally work on Sunday nights, but as a manager. I try not to say no to shifts. It was unexpectedly busy, mind you, and I had no idea what this girl name was, nor did I care. It was busy prior to her arrival. My store had a line of several people, and my store's phone kept ringing off the hook. First red flag, the girl called my store from a private number to place her order. Second red flag, she called back several times and hung up for whatever reason. Keep in mind, when she called, she was from her actual number, and I read the caller ID. After this, we had two callers place an order and ask to pay over the phone. My store does not by any means accept payment over the phone, due to previous situations. This tipped me off and had me thinking she had something to do with it, but I have no proof. After almost an hour, she finally comes to pick up her food. Thank goodness I put her on hold because I loathe dealing with customers who complain their food is cold when they are late picking up their order. FYI, if you aren't going to be on time, call us and tell us that. But don't tell us all of a sudden you don't want it anymore. When she walked in, she was smirking at me with the look of, Yeah boo, that's right. I checked you, now what are you going to do? I'm going to make you pay for your order and tell them to make it. While well, I pull my broken nail off my aching finger. Because my restaurant cook is a pure asshole, I told him what happened, and he took his precious time making her rice, and my boss took it out to her. But I really believe those phone calls were her. Update, July 31st, 2017. Okay, y'all, so I decided to see if the name on the caller ID was actually the girl's real name by plugging it into Facebook's search bar. Y'all, when I tell y'all, I laughed so hard from what I saw. Turns out the caller ID led me right to her Facebook page. I made the discovery that we are in fact Facebook friends. What the hell? Shaking my damn head. I'm not sure how long we've been friends on the site, but I find the possibility of her scoping out my page hilarious. 5. I used to work for a pizza joint a few years back. Where we were located will help better understand the situation. The store was across the street from the local VA hospital, near the airport and several big chain hotels. 
The store was next to our city's war zone, that's what we called it. It's an area where crime is an everyday thing. Our local cops are there every hour of the day for anything, really. Well, now that's out of the way, I was a closing manager on the weekdays. We closed at 11pm, weekends at midnight. This will come into play later. It was a weekday, and I'm closing the front up while my cook takes care of the back. I'm waiting for my driver to come back from a run, and he gets in around 11.30pm. I'm cashing him out, counting his runs the normal. We get a call a minute or so later. I'll call her Crazy Lady. Thank you for calling Hell Freezer Pizza. How may I help you? Crazy Lady. Hi, I'd like to place an order. Me. I'm sorry, miss, but we are closed for the night. Crazy Lady. And why the hell did you pick up the phone? Me. I'm sorry, miss, but we are required to pick up the phone if anyone calls. Crazy Lady. I don't understand why the hell you picked up the fucking phone if you're not going to take my order. At this point, my driver is looking at me and making a what-the-heck look, and I got an evil little smirk on my face. Me, miss, we are a corporate location and have several franchise locations. They normally call around this time if they need anything. Crazy lady. I want to speak to your manager. Me, speaking. Crazy lady. You're not the damn manager. Get me your damn manager, blah. Me. Miss, I am the closing manager on shift and my name isn't blah. Crazy lady. Oh, yes it is. I know you said it. Blah. Me. Miss, that isn't my name and I need you to calm down. Crazy lady. I want your employee number now. Me. I can't give that to you. No, I didn't mention the fact that we didn't have employee numbers because we never had any at all and my driver was beside himself trying not to laugh. Crazy lady. I want your damn employee number. You will give it to me now. Me, I'm sorry, but I can't give it to you. Crazy lady. I will come in tomorrow morning and complain to your manager. Me. Miss, I am the closing manager on shift tonight. As well as the opening manager tomorrow. If you have any complaints at all, I'll be more than happy to send them to the right people. Crazy lady. I want your damn employee number, blah. Me, miss, as I said before, I can't give that to you. And again, my name isn't blah. To spare you the rest of this phone call, it went on like this for a while, and I was trying so hard to keep my cool and not laugh at how much of a pain this woman was being. My driver was getting his kicks out of it, and my cook was wondering what was taking so long. Safe to say, that call ended, and I explained to my cook what happened. He got a kick out of it as well, considering the reason I gave her, and she was wanting what she couldn't get. She never showed the next day, and I let that closing manager know what happened, and what to expect. Never heard anything out of it up until I left, but that's another story. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Adventures in Fast Food and Retail Subscriber Edition. Thank you very much to everybody who sent in stories for use in this video. If you yourself have a story of any kind you'd like to send to me, please do send it to kingofthecities at gmail.com. You can find the email in the description of every video. Also, before we go on any further, I'll remember to include a link in the description. I want to give a shout out to Aunt Shu, the author of story number three. Now, Aunt Shu was in a bit of a car accident recently. I'm probably being very British and under understating that. But she... Let's see if we can find that. Uh, she's in, in a bit of difficulty right now. And she set up a GoFundMe page. Now, I understand uh, many of you might not be able to, to help out. But if you go have a look and if you're able to share the link around, uh, that would be appreciated. If you have the time. Okay. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.